Welcome back to the second installment of the Prada build. If you haven't checked out the first episode, we go over the history of the vehicle, how I got it, some of the trips that it's done. Uh, we go through the teardown and, and the state of the vehicle. It was sort of been a bit neglected, but as you can see now, done an overhaul detail inside and out. The paint's actually looking better than I've ever, ever seen it really. We've got a really good blank slate now, so let's have a chat about our build plans. Now we could have gone a really big build and those big impressive builds while they're uh, fun to look at, they're probably not that relatable, not that practical. We wanted to build something that we can use and has lots of flexibility, a really reliable tourer. Uh, and the reason being is we want to take this to all the other shows all around Australia. We want to meet you guys and show you what we're up to. We want to use it for media and shoots. Um, and we also want to take, them, take the, the Prada back out on trips, you know. Take her out of retirement, release her back out to the pastures and have a bit of fun with her again. Now we're going to go through all the bits and pieces we're going to put on this vehicle and we're going to go through why we've chosen those products and how it adds to the functionality of what we eventually want to achieve with the vehicle. The other thing this will allow us to do as well is have a bit of fun with different product ideas that we've had sitting on the shelf and potentially they might turn into products that we'll bring to market. But for now, the first thing we want to do is get the roof rack on. Kit. Nice. So there's a few reasons why we chose the Pioneer 6. It's an evolution compared to their uh, previous design. They've put a heap of effort into reducing the drag. You can see there's extra inserts on the front edge and it does look very sleek. Now what that means is with less drag, you've got less noise and potentially uh, less fuel, so more, more fuel efficient. They've also gone to a higher strength alloy, which means for the same roof rack loading, this thing is 20% lighter. So everyone's watching their GVMs, so every single kilo that you can save makes a big difference. It does feel lighter. It's got, it's got the lip on the other side. You can just hook, hook um, ratchet straps and stuff on. The other big difference that you'll notice on this as well is they've got more channels to mount your accessories to. That's because they've gotten rid of the slot nut apertures the little cutouts to put your slot nuts in. They've got the Zwift lock system, which allows you to attach accessories anywhere and remove them anywhere. So really clever uh, system, quite courageous in, in terms of um, challenging the status quo and how other people have done it. It means that you can actually mount brackets all the way to the end and remove and adjust your setup quite quickly and easily. We've chosen the backbone system to mount the rack to the vehicle. Now, a couple of reasons for that. The, ac the actual backbone ties together the mounting point, so it adds a little bit of extra strength to the rack and distributes the load. And we're going to be putting a 270 awning on this, so that's, that's good to be able to distribute the load out. Probably a good idea to have a look at the instructions, eh? <laughs> what I'm interested in is how to make sure it's mounted properly. I should actually get the impact driver, that <laughs> might be quicker. Do they even have backbones when you put the rack on this? Nope. They came out probably six months after. It's a good idea. It's simple. We've installed the backbone onto the top of the roof there. You've got the three mounting points there and you can see how well that extra sort of rib of steel has tied together those mounts. So uh, helps distribute the load across the entire roof and allows us to mount the roof rack on that quite easily. So we'll put the roof rack on next. So what we have to do now is actually position these crossbars underneath because this is a 1900 long by 1200 wide rack and it fits multiple vehicles but the slats need to be changed to suit those vehicles. So what you do, scan the QR code and the fitting instructions, takes you to the website and it gives you all the dimensions and it's really nice how they got the, the actual the markings on there and there's a little tiny arrow on each, inside each one of those. So we're just what, what we're doing, we're loosening them off, sliding them in and tightening them back up. And we even got a little torque wrench here so you can't over tighten. The fact that these slide so well sort of says to me that it's 
really nicely made. Because you know, if it's not, it would jam up. Okay, before we install this on, onto, the, onto the car, um, we're going to put a table slide underneath the roof rack. So if you watched the first video, you would have seen um, the original table slide on the underneath of that platform rack. Now that's something I came up uh, with in 2016 and I used it up at the Cape. It was the first thing that came out at the campsite each time we stopped. So handy to have a table uh, stored somewhere where other things aren't on top of it. So we're going to do the same with this vehicle. And if you have the luxury of being able to install it before you put the roof rack on the car, it makes it super easy, much, much easier. It's always good to check, check the actual production stock. spacer kit give us that 50 mil of clearance or 45 to 50 so that the table doesn't rub on the top of your roof so I'm just putting these spaces in before I tighten everything down directions right this time Plenty of clearance. Hello. And oh, this way. Nice. Yeah, plenty of room. Plenty. Cool. Okie dokie, let's get a scan. Sort of gave up on that one and then this one was in the in the style of our recovery point so it's got the same element design element as our recovery point so and then off to printing didn't look too out of proportion did it <laughs> <laughs> Sort of matches your knobs. That one's a bit, that's a medium, that's a small. And I've got a big one. Yeah, there you go. I think it looks okay. If we make it dark and black like everything else, it'll disappear. But that looks nice down the bottom there. This is my first go at getting the size right. Look at that. Want to put that one on? I don't know, what do you reckon? <laughs> you just have to hold it on the, on the side. It can be a hand rest. Yeah, I think that's... I don't know, some people would go for that. Maybe the petite. That's a lot smaller. That was my Saturday. But it's progression, because I wanted to cover that up, and I thought I had to go really big, so I made this big, and that's why the rest of it got so big. But, you know, from, from the right angle, it looks okay. Maybe. Which angle is that? <laughs> from really far away. <laughs> That one looks good. The, the one on the printer at the moment is slightly smaller, so just getting there, fine tuning. We'll go for a matte anodized finish and maybe have some um, some machine shinier features and potentially put the K in the top there. We'll see. I want it fairly understated. I don't want to sort of have too much going on there. Nice. 
nice. I like how it's all sort of nicely tucked in. And this must be the front edge, just a bit of, got a bit of a taper on it. And not like it's gonna save a lot of wind resistance, but it's a nice little touch. I like this mounting plate. It's nice and chunky, you can see how thick it is in this, this lip. So, okay. Just need to find the hardware. So 25 mil M8 bolts. We'll get it attached, eh? I'll just slide all these in. So I'll put two bolts per bracket. And we'll just space them out and figure out where we want to put them. So this is the front. I'll put, I'll put them towards the back. Two towards the back, one towards the front. And if I was clever, I would have put the, the bolts in the other end. But that's okay. I'll probably do it a bit of a diagonal. Or I can go to the centre. No, I like diagonal. so many options for 270 awnings but for this particular vehicle I wanted something fairly compact and that fit the uh, roof rack nicely so th this is 2.2 meters long and the racks 1.9 and the other thing too is it's not too heavy this one's 26 kilos so it ticked a lot of boxes and the fact that this also has a section that folds out the front means that it gives a, 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 a huge amount of space even though it's only 2.2 meters two holes on this one and that should clear this. Cool. Still get my table out. There you go. Maybe if it's raining really hard you can sort of... As you can see we've got the 270 awning installed up on the roof rack. Now we wanted a, a awning for shade because we'll be potentially outdoors at the shows, uh, open days, and just having that shade for when we're on trips and out on the tracks. Now we wanted a freestanding awning because it makes it much quicker to set up and put away. And there's a few reasons why we chose this awning from Dashi. So there's a really good article about how Dashi developed this awning. It took them over two years of R&D, spent about a month testing. And in a nutshell, this Freestanding awnings rated to 30, about 30 kilometers per hour freestanding and fails at about 40 kilometers per hour freestanding. Now, if you peg it down, it fails at 90 kilometers per hour, which is you know, almost cyclone sort of level. The other thing I really like about this is they've integrated the lighting into the arms and the arms are very sort of, um, uh, they're an extrusion, which makes them nice and strong and they look really good too. And just little details like how they've kept this really simple, this, this hinge arrangement. They've got die cast um, sort of hinge housings in there. And even this backing plate that goes along and mounts uh, the awning to the rack, it's double sandwiched, so it's nice and strong. So that's why the whole awning is nice and taut and tight. So really well thought out and really appreciate the little details they put in. Even down to how the zips uh, zip up and there's a little flap on the end to, to hold the zips in place so they don't sort of rattle around. So really well done. I've got a power bank. Yeah. You can try, try the light. We're just using a USB for the moment, but we'll get this all plumbed up, wired up. These little tiny ports here. And if I hit the magic switch, we should have some light. Here we go. There you go. How good is that? And then that's um, combination white and amber and all amber. And we have a dimmer as well. Cool, but nice and bright's good. That's always in there. Maybe just some, maybe a USB port or a line that we can just run through this way to plug it in. Maybe we'll use the console. Hmm. You might, might reach. Cool, we'll work that one out. Because we're going to be taking this car off-road, self-recovery traction boards are a given. So we're going to install some Max Tracks on the roof rack. Really good place to put them because they'll get dirty and they take up space and so forth. We're going to put them on with our stealth mounts that fold away. Gives you flexibility with what you want to do on the roof rack. Let's get them on. And I'm going to do all the pins so that they fold backwards. So just in case you forget to put your pins down, they'll fold down by themselves. So that's the plan. I have to get a set of max tracks and get the distance right. Okay, so I'll put the front one here. 
How did the folding pins come about? That was a custom suggestion, wasn't it? It was. It was a custom suggestion. I remember it was, I think, about a month before Christmas, and I said, I think I can do this. And we had we had the prototype in you know, early December. Gently lift these out so I can tighten these down. So if you want to do it the OCD way, you can always get a tape measure and make, measure 890 millimeters. But this way works as well. Yeah, cool. Pretty good. Just check that everything folds down nicely. Okay, and seal them. You can put a swag over the top if you're not using Max Tracks or whatever. But fold them up when you need them. If you've got a keen eye, you see that we have actually installed uh, extreme pins on here. So these pins here are longer, and these are to suit um, two sets of Max Tracks extremes, which is what we'll be running long term on this vehicle. So the other handy piece of recovery gear is your shovel. Also good around the campfire, campfire cooking or whatever you want to do. And I tend to like to have the shovel towards the back. I'm putting a couple of stowets in. I like the way these work. And these are on our brackets here that angle the stowets down, make it easier to get to and keeps it nice and sort of low profile. Get these whiff locks in. These are lockable too, so if you buy a really expensive shovel, you know it won't go anywhere. There you go. Shove it in. Done. Lock it. That's so good. We've ticked off a fair few things on the roof rack. And we'll actually revisit the roof rack in a few weeks time once we've sorted out our 12 volt, because we want to add some lights and some electrical bits and pieces. But for now, we'll leave you with a sneak peek with something that we've been working on. Just sort of attaching to the roof rack up above here, there's these three points here with vast water tanks, rotor packs water tank, a fire extinguisher, quick fist, shovel mount. Trying to retain our look, retain all the functionality we want without making it this super intense over the top pattern.